Today, I'm going to introduce you to the Swing library in Java. Java is, Swing is one of the two popular graphics libraries in Java, the other one being JavaFX. JavaFX is a much newer library, but it's more complicated. The error messages are not as good, and it has some issues working with BlueJay. We're going to use Swing instead. It's a much simpler library. It's easier library to start with if you're a first-year programmer. I'm going to walk you through about a half a dozen different projects to get started. And the first one we're going to look at is a simple yes-no dialog. You can see I've imported some components from the Swing library. This is the main import right here. This is a more experimental Swing library. And this particular event that I'm importing is not used in this project, but it'll be used in a slightly later project. So here you can see that I'm using this method called show confirmation dialog. And this happens to be a static method in this class called J option pane. And what's going to happen here is it's going to sit here waiting for the user to click on one of the buttons. And after the user has clicked on it, the reply is going to be saved in this variable called reply. And then we're going to test that reply to see if they picked yes or no. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. One other thing I want to mention is that this null indicates that we want to create a brand new window to display this dialog. This is the message we're going to be displaying. And this is simply a title that appears in the title bar of the window. And all these are obviously customizable. So this is the nice, simple, sleek little window that appears. And you can see through this little back and forth light that the program is still running. And it's waiting for me to press one of these buttons. If I type in, if I press yes, you can see I'll get a message that says yes. So, and now the program has exited. So that is the first of the dialogues. Okay, we're gonna move on to our second example now. That's gonna be this one right here. And let me just open this for you and show it to you. And this has two little selections. This first one will allow you to select from a list. So we're going to have this list, which is considered uh, an array here. And we're gonna use this as a drop-down menu. It's gonna be a drop-down menu. So we're going to have three choices in our drop-down menu. We're going to have ham, yam, and spam as our three choices. And here, we're going to display, once again, the question for the user. And this time, instead of giving them a yes or no dialog box, we're going to give them uh, this thing called a plain message. And I'm going to bring this back up in a second, but let's just run it once and see what it looks like. So here you can see I've got this great little dialogue. And if I ha click on here, you can see that the three choices are all displayed here in a nice drop down fashion. And they can pick any of the three. If I pick yam here and hit OK, you can see that tells me that I picked yam. So that's really useful thing to have. Let's look at the code again. And you can also see that the default is shown here. You can pick this default to be any of the three that you have picked originally. And because you might be needing this down the road in college or perhaps you're building something for another class, maybe a business class or something, I would encourage you to include the comments also because even though it may make sense now, in a few days you won't remember what any of these fields do. So having the comments alongside will be useful to you, I believe. I think you can see how useful some of these dialogues are if you intend to build any kind of a simple application, whether for your own use or for a class in college, these little dialogue menus come in really handy. In case you're wondering, it's been a while, but this sequence right here, backslash double quote, actually prints the double quote. That's what that backslash sequence does, similar with this one. This is just the title that appears on top of the window. I've never been able to figure out what this is exactly, but I think it's the font style. Here, we're not using an icon, unlike the previous one where we had the question mark icon. Here is the array of possibilities that we have for our drop-down window, and here is the default value that we're providing to the user. Once we get here to this if statement, that means that the dialog has completed and the user has picked one of the items from the drop-down menu. So now we're looking to see to make sure that they did indeed pick something instead of 
just Xing out of the window because that's a possibility also. That's why we have a null check here. And then if they entered something, the value that was entered is stored in this S variable, which is a string. And that's what we're displaying in the console to show what the user has entered. If we get here, that means that this if statement did not trigger, and that means that they X'd out of the window. You should experiment with this when you run it to see what happens when you pick an item versus when you simply close out of the window without picking. Make sure it's all working. So in this example that we just saw, you can see that the user is restricted to only picking the items that are available in this drop down menu. These are the only things they can pick. In the next example I'm going to show you, they we're going to give the user the ability to pick anything they want. So that's this choice right here. And here, instead of having a drop down menu, we're simply going to give them a cursor where they can type in their answer. I'm still going to give them the default value to start off with, just in case they don't want to type anything. We can just use this as the default answer, but they can override this answer by typing in the new answer. Now notice that they're completely unrestricted in their choice of what they want to have with their green eggs. And so it's not going to be a drop down menu anymore. It's simply going to be a cursor with the ability to type whatever word they want. Let's run this one. And you can see here this time there's no drop down menu, but they can type in any food that they want in here. So I can put in here uh, berries. And now you can see that I am having green eggs and berries. So that is a great little option. And I'm going to ask you, now most of this stuff you can cut and paste from your previous code. So hopefully this one will not take as long. And I'll just leave this up here for you for a couple of minutes to look at. There's some minor differences in here. This null basically takes away the entire array option and allows it to have a cursor instead. This is the key difference right here that I've highlighted between the last code that I wrote and this version. We're going to move on to the next example now. That was project number two.